reminded us that as he fought in the 1950s and 1960s, the entire continent of Africa was under the colonial yoke. He would have reminded us that we Africans have suffered more than any other race. He would have reminded us that there was a time when globalization meant the slavery of Africa. He would have reminded us that there was a time when slavery lost its value and luster, that there are men and women who came from Europe and took away our freedom and took away our land. He would have reminded us. He would not have stopped there. He would have reminded us that through our own effort, in the 1950s and 1960s, we liberated ourselves and that the 32 heads of states and government who were then alive sat down in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia in the month of May 1963. And each one of them spoke eloquently and passionately, reminding us that the acquisition of flag independence was just but the beginning. He would have reminded us of the speeches of many great men who sat on that day. He would have told us that the host on that day, Hail Silasi of Ethiopia, reminded the hosts that Africa can only regain our esteem if our people are free and if she exploits our resources. He would have not stopped there. He would have gone ahead and reminded us that even before we met in Addis Ababa in 1963, the neo-colonial project was alive and well and that the neo-colonialists had already killed Patrice Emery Lumumba in 1961. He would have reminded us. He would not have stopped there. He would have gone ahead and gone through the speeches of all the leaders that were present on that day, on the 24th day of May, 1963, and would have reminded us of the speech of Mwalimu Kambara Genyerere, and would have told us, Mwalimu told us we came here to Addis Ababa, not to unite, but to underscore the fact that without unity, we will be recolonized again. But he would have concluded with the speech of that great man, Osagie for Kwame Nukuruma. And he would have told us that Nukuruma warned us that if we don't unite, we will be colonized again. And he would have said that as I look at Africa today, I ask myself the question, has Africa liberated herself from our own self-declared enemies? The enemy of poverty, is it dead and buried? Have we written the obituary of poverty, you would have asked? Have we written the obituary of ignorance, you would have asked? Have we written the obituary of disease and sorrow and want? Are we at the dinner table of civilization as equal partners, or we still reside in the menu to be consumed by other civilization, <laughs> Madiba would have asked. And I think that Madiba would have surveyed the continent of Africa seeking evidence whether the continent of Africa is truly, truly liberated. He would have started from Cape Town. And he would have looked at Cape Town and said, yes, we liberated ourselves and there is liberation from political apartheid, but he would have asked rhetorically, 
Is there a possibility that there is the economic appetite Madiba would have posed? And he would not have stopped there. He would have gone to Namibia and asked, is it different now that we have an African government are the young men and women who are resident in Namibia liberated? Do they have opportunities for innovation and invention? Are they tilling their land? Are they getting the fruits of their labor? Are they exploiting their minerals or their merely workers? He was of wood and drawers of water. He would have asked of Namibia, but he would not have stopped there. He would have gone to Botswana and asked who eats the choicest meat from Botswana? Are they eaten in South Africa or in Europe? He would have asked. But he would not stop there. He would go to Swaziland, to Lesotho, to Mozambique, to Malawi, to Zambia, to Angola. And he would ask the same question, have we liberated ourselves? And he would have gone to the Democratic Republic of Congo, that country that God so endowed. And he would have asked, is the spirit of Patrice Emery Lumumba settled? He would have wondered, how can it be that a country that is so endowed is the poorest on earth and in the continent? He would have posed. Madiba would have cast his eye and would have posed the question, did we not fight and attain independence that we may not fight against each other? He would have asked, are we still fighting and killing each other? And he would have sought evidence in order to determine whether we have liberated ourselves from the pain of killing each other. Madiba would have gone to Somalia and he would have seen the blood letting in Somalia. He would not have stopped there. He would have gone to Central African Republic, where a republic where brother is rising against brother and sister against sister. And he would have gone to the Democratic Republic of Congo, where there is an unending civil war. And he would have gone to Northern Mali and to Mauritania and to Guinea Bissau and to the Southern Cameroons. And he would have come to the verdict that we have not stopped killing each other for no reason. But he would not have stopped there. He would have asked this thing that we embrace called democracy. Have we become the richer or the poorer because of it? He would have looked at a few leaders in different parts of the world. And he would have used an African proverb to injunct those leaders by telling them, no matter how good a dancer you are, you must leave the stage at a certain time. He would have told them that leadership is a relay race. He would have told the leaders in Africa that true success is when your successor succeeds and that there is wisdom just as we can borrow from the ocean just as wave pushes wave to renew the ocean, so new blood and young blood must push old blood in order to renew society. And Madiba would not have stopped there. He would have asked, how is it that a continent that is so endowed because Africa is endowed. If you go to the west of Africa, you would have said, don't we have cocoa in Ghana? He would remind us, did we not call, call Ghana Gold Coast before we renamed it because of the gold that resides there? He would have asked, but who makes the cocoa? How is it that the cocoa that is produced in Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire is then converted into chocolate in Switzerland and in Belgium? He would have posed the question, how is it that the tea that is produced in Kenya is taken to the United Kingdom and upon a little addition is then christened British tea? He would have asked. 
He would not have asked that stop there. He would have asked, how is it that gold and diamond that is produced in Africa is traded in the London Stock Exchange? He would have asked. <laughs> Madiba would have asked, why is it that Africa produces what it does not consume and consumes what it does not produce? <laughs> Madiba would also have wondered whether slavery is alive and well, or it is dead. Because Madiba would have looked at the goings-on goings in Libya. And he would look at black men and black women being sold like chattels. He would have seen dinghies drowning in the Mediterranean Sea, capsizing and drowning people in the Mediterranean Sea. He would have seen young men and young women being rejected at different ports in Spain and Italy and Malta. And he would have asked, are we children of a lesser God? He would have asked. He would have posed many questions. How is it that a continent that has one billion people is still at the bottom in all indices of human development? He would have posed. But Madiba would not have drowned himself in sorrows and lamentation. He would have prescribed solutions. He would have said, Africa must unite. But he would have exhorted us that our unity must not be at the level of slug sloganeering and mere rhetoric. He would have said that if Africa wants to be recognized amongst the committee of nations as a continent that is worthy as indeed it is worthy, those who are in political leaders must be men and women who recognize that political leadership is indeed a trusteeship on behalf of the people. Yeah. He would have reminded us, as I, a South African friend of mine told me yesterday, that the time has come that we must do away with dealers and have leaders instead. He would have reminded me, as a South African friend of mine told us, that we must, in this day and age, do away with cheaters and have teachers instead. <laughs> Nelson Mandela would have recognized that Africa can indeed liberate herself. He would have told the Africans in Sadak, the time has come that the region must allow free movement of labor in a manner that allows people to exploit their potential. But when in Sadak Madiba would have concerned himself with two key things, he would have said, how is it that corruption is still a scourge in our midst? He would have posed the question, why is it that we have in many parts of Sadak Men and women whose appetite for public goods is insatiable. <laughs> he would have asked, why is it that men and women are in the business of stealing on an industrial scale? And Madiba would have said, Amandla, Ngawetu, Maibuye, Maibuye, Viva Mandela, Viva South Africa, Viva Africa, Viva Humanity, Amanda, God bless you.